Hey guys, it's Megan and we're back in the library today and today we are filming a video that I've waited all year to film. I'm super excited because these are my top five favorite books that I read this year. So let's start with number five, which shockingly is a YA horror novel. What in the world? What is happening? I don't even like YA that much and I definitely don't really like horror that much, but this book was so good. It is House of Hollow by... I can't remember her name, but it'll be on the screen. <laughs> so this book was just out of the blue. Like I just decided to read it very randomly. I found it on my library's app that I have for my school library. And I was like, okay, I'll give it a try. It's around Halloween time. Why not? I did not realize that it's almost like fairy tale esque but like magical realism and dark and i was just i was super shocked the twist ending was wild i did not see it coming maybe other readers saw it coming but i did not see it coming and i loved the ending and it made everything else worth it i've said before in other videos my only complaint about this book is the middle dragged on a little bit um just like th there'll be flashbacks uh, and talking just about their lives as children and stuff and like that was fine at the beginning but eventually you're just like okay like I'm ready for more stuff to happen now I get it I, I'm, I'm ready to move on so other than the slow flashbacks kind of in the middle then this book was really good I loved the characters it was just very unlike anything that I would normally read it was dark it was creepy um, it wasn't scary at all though I would have to say I would not consider this scary more just dark um, the atmosphere was really cool with like everything's like beautiful but like like twisted and so I just really liked that a lot and I highly recommend this book. Number four is Piranesi by Susanna Clarke. Who would have thought? Actually it's not surprising at all because I loved her other novel Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell which is about that big. It's absolutely massive and I love the Netflix series. So when my mother-in-law bought me this book for Christmas last year it was one of the first books I read. I know I read it right before I had the baby. I think in January is when I read it and this book has still stuck with me. I cannot wait to read it again. I want to try to have my husband read it. We'll see. It is super weird. It's like magical realism. Super bizarre. Like you have to be up for like this random guy who doesn't really know who he is or how he got there living in this like strange massive mansion that's full of water <laughs> and each like like the halls are endless um and he keeps track of the years by like oh it was the third year of the albatross or something the, the year the albatross came to the 32nd hallway and like that's the name of the chapter and you're just like what um and there's only like one other person that lives in this castle or in this mansion this big house and you don't know if that person's good or bad and you have no idea how this person got there you don't know like you realize it's kind of set in another world but you don't know if that's like somehow related to our world or not and it's just it's very mysterious the whole time obviously I love magical realism too I mean the last one was kind of like that as well House of Hollow so I really enjoyed this book the only complaint I had about it and the reason why it's not just a little bit higher on the list is that I feel like the ending um, was just not as magical as I hoped it would be. It gives you a little too much scientific explanation for what's going on. And you're just like, oh man, I guess I would almost rather it be open-ended. But if you don't like open-ended endings and you just want answers, like here's exactly what's going on, then this book will provide that for you. But overall, I really enjoyed it and I highly recommend. It's also really, really short. It's like this big compared to her other novel. <laughs> Number three is actually the third book in a trilogy and it is As Good As Dead by Holly Jackson. I cannot believe I read this either because this is a YA mystery series. The first one is called A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. Super popular. One of the most popular books in our entire library. Um, that first book in the series it was one of the um, Kentucky Book Award nominees. So there were 10 of them and this was one. So I read it after so many students absolutely loved it. And it was like one of the choices that students had to use as required reading from over the summer. So I ordered a whole bunch of copies for the library. I could never keep them on the shelves. Book one was really good. Good. So I would have almost put it on the list had the series not gotten better. Book two was actually pretty good too. I don't know if it was as good as book one, but I was like, okay, I'll continue on. Book three, crazy. This book was absolutely nuts. As good as dead. It was fast paced. The mystery is totally like turned upside down kind of from what happens in the other, from the first two. I really can't say anything more because it will spoil it for you. But just know that like about 50% of the way in, crazy things start happening and you're like, what? Like I did not see this coming and it changes the outcome of the whole rest of the novel. So the synopsis it gives you in the beginning of the book really doesn't do it justice because you don't even realize what's going to happen. So I'm so glad that I powered through the series or continued on with it. And this book was absolutely phenomenal. 
Now, number two and number one are like so closely related that I are so closely to, so close together that I almost can't decide which one should be which. Um, but I think what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to give. When I think about pure enjoyment and pure happiness, I'm gonna have to give the number two spot. In fact, I'm changing my order right now based on what I had written down because when I'm, I'm thinking in my heart which one was the best book I read this year, I'm gonna say number two is A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. It was almost number one. Um, and probably the only reason it's not number one is just because of the letdown of the rest of the series, which is not fair to this book. But this book was so good. I listened to the audio version of it, which wasn't even great. It was like this old man narrator. And this book, like, it had so much promise. There was so many things introduced that I could see where, like, later on it could show you more about this character or the backstory about this thing. And, like, maybe this could become a main factor. And I was like, oh, my gosh, it's going to be, this is going to open up a whole new world that's going to be amazing. Amazing. And then books two and three were so bad. <laughs> they didn't explore any of the things really that I had hoped for um, in book one. But I did love book one. It was obviously one of the best books I read this year. And I do highly recommend it. Although honestly, I would not continue. I would not read the rest of the series if I were you. And the number one best book that I read all year is actually a middle grade and it is the closest thing to Harry Potter that I've ever read, which is why it is the number one book that I read this year. My favorite is a book I just read. It is Nevermore, The Trials of Morgan Crow by Jessica Townsend. That sounded really fakey. I was like, sounds like I'm, you're about to win a prize on a game show. <laughs> Okay, filming too many videos in a row at this point. Anyway, this book blew my mind. I read maybe a hundred pages and decided to buy the entire series on Amazon because I could already tell that it was gonna be so similar to Harry Potter and it really is. Honestly, I think the writing is better than Harry Potter. Um, it's so whimsical and magical and funny. Like it's definitely more humorous, I feel like, than Harry Potter. And I really enjoyed the kind of humor that even adults could find funny. I think it would be great for all ages because of that. Uh, but the only thing I think is not as good as Harry Potter are the characters, especially the main character. Um, I, of course, when you read Harry Potter, you really care for Harry himself, and Harry's a great character. But Morgan Crow, like, she's fine, and I like her and all, but I just feel like I don't know her that well, even though it's from her point of view. I don't know. It's like she's not a very round character. Like, I don't know how to describe it. Like, she's not necessarily a flat character, I guess, because she obviously has character traits, but... I don't know, I just don't feel like I know the essence of her, uh, even after reading now almost three books with her as the protagonist. But like Harry, I know Harry. Like I feel like I know Harry Potter, but I don't know Morgan Crow. So I don't know if that makes any sense. But anyway, the rest of the character, the characters are really good though. The side characters are fine, but this book is so good. The rest of the series gets possibly even better. I absolutely loved Wondersmith. So maybe, maybe I kind of lie. Maybe the, maybe Wondersmith's the best book I read. <laughs> I don't know, but I didn't put the sequel on the list because I just thought it wouldn't be fair. I wanted to give some other books a chance, but technically, yes, Wondersmith would also be one of the best books I read this year, the sequel. And I'm reading the third one, Hollow Pox, right now, and I'm almost finished with it. They're all amazing, and I cannot wait for book four to come out. So those are all the books that I would put on my top five. There were some that could almost be honorable mentions, but I'm going to talk about those in another video where I tell you guys my most surprising books of the year, because a lot of those will be on there as well, because even though they weren't like five star books, they were still surprisingly good. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed this and um, let me know what your guys' favorite books of the year are. So I will see you guys again soon and have a good day. Bye.